Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me. My name is Lauren and I am about to guide you through a gentle yoga practice where we will focus on our hips. Um, we're going to do quite a bit for the hip flexors, but then also get into um, some inner thigh hip openers as well in a more traditional sense. So really um, typical stuff today, two blocks and a blanket um, are things you might need. So I'd have them handy. And we're going to start on our backs. And let's get set up in a supported butterfly. So I always like a blanket under the back of the head. Just a little bit of support there. And then a block under each thigh. Sort of supporting the outer thigh, outer part of the knee, outer part of the calf. And depending on the flooring that you're on and the type of blocks that you have, you might want to try placing the blocks so they're flush on your skin and at an angle on the floor, which is counterintuitive, but feels better. But uh, like I said, it depends on the floor. Your blocks might kind of just slip and slide. So um, you just want to get comfortable where you can just rest. So if that doesn't work, that's okay. And oftentimes people like to have their hands on their belly here, or the hands on the hips. You might do that or arms are always welcome out in opposite directions. Do what feels good. Get yourself comfortable and settle in. Notice where your mind goes when you're resting, when you're softening. The hope is that throughout the practice, the movement, the breath work, the focus, all of these things that we move through, the hope is that they allow the mind to slow down. So it's very normal for the mind to be very active at the beginning, especially. Just notice where you're at today. No right or wrong answer. Notice where your mind goes. And bring it back to the present. Bring it to your breath. Notice your breath. And notice specifically the different parts of the breath. There's the inhalation, the exhalation. But there's also a pause as we switch from the in to the out and the out to the in. You just notice those pauses. Notice that feeling of your breath, like it's just floating, suspended, just for a moment. It's an effortless pause, an effortless hold. But it's there, it's noticeable. Now you are welcome to stay here, noticing these pauses, these kumbhaka, the breath retention. Or maybe join me in square breathing, where we'll lengthen that pause so it's the same length as the inhalation and exhalation. You can think about this pranayama and your breath here like a square. 
all four sides are equal, all four parts of the breath will be equal. So you're welcome to do your own breath work or join me in square breathing. So to begin, exhale, just release. And then inhale for four, three, two, one. Hold four, three, two, one. Exhale four, three, two, one. Hold four, three, two, one. Inhale four, three, two, one, hold, four, three, two, one, exhale, four, three, two, one, hold, four, three, two, one, inhale, four, three, two, one, hold, four, three, two, one, exhale, four, three, two, one, hold, four, three, two, one, inhale, continue at your own pace. Complete one more round at your own pace. And then return to your natural breath. Notice how you feel. No judgments. But keeping your awareness inward, if it feels right, you're welcome to set an intention for your practice. Silently and slowly repeat your intention to allow it to settle in your heart. And now you can deepen your breath. Take some big, deep, full breaths and allow the breath to propel movement. Wiggle fingers, wiggle toes, rock the head. And just create larger movements, gradually moving arms and legs. Oh, and releasing. <sighs> You can set the blocks off to the side. Okay. Give yourself a moment. Take any movement that feels good. A couple breaths. Just doing something because you want to, because you can. All right, okay, let's start in the back. Put the knees bent, feet flat. All right, take a deep breath in. And as you breathe out, hug the right leg in towards your belly. You can hold on to the top of the shin, the back of the thigh, whatever feels good. 
but really draw the knee in. Think about hugging it in and release it a little bit. Hug it in real tight and release it a little bit. Just kind of move with your breath. Exhale as you squeeze it. Inhale, release it. Exhale, squeeze. Inhale, release. Just a couple more like this. Now, even though you're squeezing with your arms, relax your shoulders. Relax the throat, neck, and jaw. Okay, now the next time you squeeze your thigh and your knee in, hold it here. So it's like you're reaching your right knee for your right armpit or your right shoulder. Now, listening to your lower back, you could keep your left knee bent or you can lengthen the left leg. If you do that, I would push your heel forward towards the top of your mat, your toes to the sky. Feel a nice length through the front of the left hip, the hip flexor, okay? All right, so you'll feel a little bit more in the hip flexor if you continue to draw the right knee towards the back of your mat and your left heel towards the front of your mat. So creating length here. Take it one more breath. Okay, now keep your right hand sort of on the right knee, right shin, right thigh, wherever feels good. Left hand at the left ASIS bone. We're going to keep the left hip still. Left side of the body really is going to stay still, but allow the right hand and right arm to guide the right knee and right leg around. Just take any movement that feels good, circle, zigzag, but left side of the body stays still. Left hip stays still. We want to isolate one side at a time. Just really give it some freedom of movement. Let it do what it needs to because it can, because you want to. One more breath. Okay. And then we're going to hug that knee back in towards the chest. Bend the left knee if it was lengthened and bring the right ankle to the top of the left thigh, figure four. So flex the right foot, protect the right knee. Now, what I like to do earlier in the practice is uh, dynamic movements and then also something a little bit gentler as opposed to what you can take later. So here, what I like to do is keep my left foot on the ground and just sort of let my legs sway side to side letting the hips just kind of stay open, but allow the legs to move. Now you could do that. So dynamic, just creating some movement, warming things up, that's the idea there. But then also just remembering not to go as deep as you would, again, at the end of the practice. So keeping that in mind, maybe you allow the hands to come to the back of the left thigh, hug the thigh in. But again, just warming up. Now, even here, maybe you sort of hug the thigh in a little, release, hug and release, just sort of see how everything feels today. Take one more breath here. Okay, now keeping the legs in figure four, let the left foot come back down onto the ground. Let the arms come out in opposite directions. Keeping the legs in figure four, scoot the hips over to the right a couple inches and allow the legs to drop to the left. The bottom of the right foot will just plant onto the ground. Maybe it won't. That's okay. But the hope is that the bottom of the right foot is on the ground. The knee is sort of up towards the sky. And you're sort of in figure four in a twist. And then just allow yourself to take a couple deep breaths here. Notice where you're feeling this, because we've got the hips and the spine both sort of opening. So just notice what you're feeling. Take two breaths here. Okay, now think about using your right obliques to do the work, inhale, exhale, right obliques, pull the legs back up to the center. You recenter the hips and allow the right foot to come back down. Take a few moments, do what feels good. All right, and then meet me back with the knees bent, feet flat. Okay, inhale. Exhale, hug the left knee in. So you can hold on to wherever you want here. That's up to you. But you're just going to hug it in tight and then just soften a bit. Hug it in really tight and release it. 
Okay, now continue to do this, softening through the shoulders, softening through the arms, listening to your lower back. Maybe you keep the right knee bent. Maybe you lengthen the right leg along the mat, but push your heel towards the front of your mat, your right heel forward, right toes up to the sky, flex the right foot. So the right side of the body is long. And you're drawing the left knee back towards the back of the mat, towards the wall behind you. A couple more here. And then just hug it in and hold it. Again, so now really focus on reaching the right heel forward. The left knee back. Soften the shoulders. Soften the arms. Soften throat, neck, and jaw. One more breath. Okay, left hand is going to stay where it's at. Right hand is going to come to the right hip, right ASIS bone. Right side of the body is long, and it's going to stay still. Left arm guides the left hip as it opens. Maybe do some circles, zigzag, forward, back. Move it around as much as you want, as much as you can, while keeping the right side still. Think about keeping your belly button facing up at the same spot the whole time. So I know I often say, imagine your the belly button is a laser pointer. Could you keep it pointing sort of in the same spot? So keeping the pelvis in alignment, the right hip where it's at, but really move that left hip around. One more breath. All right, and then draw it back in. So grab onto that left leg with both hands. Bend the right knee. Plant that right foot down onto the ground. Figure four, left ankle to the top of the right thigh. Flex the right foot. Now you've got options. Again, I like to just add a little bit of movement here. So keeping the legs in figure four and the right foot on the ground, maybe you let legs just sort of sway and drop and move. Just creating this shape very gently. Maybe you let the legs come in a little bit. Maybe you reach around the back of the right thigh. And again, maybe you hug it in and release. Let it go around. Again, soften shoulders. Take about two more breaths here. All right, now, keeping the legs in figure four, let the right foot come back onto the ground. Arms reach out in opposite directions. Scoot the hips a couple inches to the left. Let the legs drop over to the right. The bottom of the left foot will plant onto the ground again. Maybe it won't. Maybe it's sort of the inside of the foot, the arch side, big toe side. That's all right. But, again, kind of keeping this figure four shape and just noticing how it feels to be in a twist with this leg variation. One more breath. Okay, now using your left obliques to pull, inhale, Exhale, left obliques will pull to draw the legs back to the center. Replace the left foot, and again, take whatever feels good. Okay, and then when you're ready, inhale. Exhale, hug the knees into the chest. Maybe you take a happy baby. Maybe you take a butterfly. Maybe you stay right there, hugging the knees into the chest. One more breath here. And then meet me in tabletop. We're going to come all the way up and through into tabletop. So we're going to be kneeling for a little bit. If you want to bring a blanket or some cushion under your knees. And then I like the blocks here, or actually have them handy. We don't need them just the second. All right, 
So we opened up through the hips and a little bit through the spine, but let's get more into the spine. I almost forgot. My goodness. All right. Cat and cow. So hands under the shoulders, spread the fingers. Now throughout this, push the hands into the floor, lift up and out of the way from the armpits. And then inhale, drop the belly, lift your chest, maybe look forward. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, ribs to the sky, chin to the chest, look at your belly button. Inhale, drop the belly, drop the ribs, lift your chest, lift your heart, but keep pushing hands down. Exhale as you tuck the tailbone, chin to the chest. Now, one thing that I often see in students is as they come into the back bend, they shrug the shoulders. You're still pushing the hands down. It's the same goes for cobra, which is another position. Students often shrug the shoulders. People often focus more on straightening the arms than keeping the shoulders down and back. So I want you to think still pushing hands down, push the mat into the earth. Do one more of each here. Okay, and then let's meet in tabletop. All right, so this is where you're going to grab onto your blocks. We're going to come back to our hips. So I would grab onto your blocks. I like starting with them at the highest hips, or highest height, the highest hips. The highest height, you can always change them, obviously. All right, let's step the right foot forward in between the blocks. Now make sure you step the foot forward enough that you can easily wiggle the right toes. Right heel is pushing down. All right, now push down into the ground. Everything that's touching is pushing into the ground, lifting up and out away from the floor. Inhale as you lift the hips, shift forward a little bit. Feel it in the left hip flexor. Exhale, let the hips shift back. Maybe you walk the hands and blocks with you. Peel the right toes up off the ground, reach right toes up, lengthen the right leg. Feel it in the back of the right leg. Inhale, shift forward into a low lunge. Plant the right foot, keep lifting the chest, tuck the tailbone. Exhale lengthening the right leg, right toes reach to the sky. Inhale, shift forward, low lunge. Feel it in the left hip flexor. Exhale, shift it back. Feel it in the back of the right leg. So a couple more just like this. Notice what you're feeling. Move with your breath. Do one more of each. And then let's meet in the lunge, planting the right foot down into the ground. And then let the hips slide back and then just slide the right leg all the way back. Give yourself a moment. Maybe roll the wrists. Okay, and then we'll sit up on the second side, step the left foot forward, stepping it all the way forward. You can wiggle the left toes, push the heel down, push the hands down with the chest. All right, so push the left foot, right leg, everything down, inhale, shift forward, exhale, shift back, lengthen the left leg, maybe walk the hands back, inhale, shift forward, low lunge. Exhale, shift back, half splits. So allow your hips to track forward and back, just along a straight line down the center of your mat. We tend to sort of move at a diagonal here. And keep reaching the heart up, shoulders down and back. Just notice the sensation. Notice what it is that your body is saying. Okay, do one more of each.
And then come back to that low lunge with the front knee bent. And then let the hips slide back, slide the leg back again. Give yourself a moment. Take the time to rest, to transition. Okay. All right, set your blocks just off your mat, the top two corners. Come on into tabletop. You can keep your blanket here. Just be mindful. We are coming up to standing, but we won't be here long. Walk the hands one handprint closer to the top of the mat. Hook the toes under. Inhale. Exhale, down dog. Take a couple breaths here. Maybe you're moving. Maybe you're staying still. But again, just observe the sensation you're experiencing today. One more breath. All right, deeply bend the knees. Inhale, look forward. Exhale again, be mindful of whatever's on your mat, but take baby steps, walking forward, forward fold. Let's stay for a few breaths. Let's hang out in forward fold. Now you can grab onto opposite elbows and let the arms sway. Maybe you interlace your hands and place them sort of at the nape of your neck or the back of the head and just allow the arms to just be like dead weight, letting the back of the neck lengthen. Maybe you interlace the fingers by the lower back, reach the knuckles to the sky. Or maybe you focus more on the legs, taking some shifting movements here. But we're going to take a couple more breaths here. Really release through the back. Soften all the, the lower back, mid back, upper back, back of the neck. One more breath. Okay. Meet me in a traditional forward fold, weight in the heels, soft bend in the knees, releasing through the arms. Inhale, lift up halfway, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, rise up, push the heels into the ground, circle the arms, lift the chest. Let's do a couple more like that. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, lift up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, rise, push the heels into the ground, circle the arms, lift the chest, maybe look up. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, rise up. Urdva Hastasana. One more like that. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. Bring the palms together. Bring the hands through to the heart. Take a deep breath. Okay. All right. We're going to take a balance pose. So we're just going to take a play off of tree pose. And I think we've done this before. We're just going to focus instead on of opening the hip, which you're welcome to take tree pose if you would rather. Um, but since we just spent so much time opening the hip flexors, we can get a, we can really intensify that stretch if we lengthen it down into the quad. So let's do that. Instead of taking a tree pose, we'll take a quad stretch. So you're obviously welcome to take tree pose instead, if you would prefer. But you're going to start with your feet hip distance apart, weight in the heels. You can wiggle your toes, shift your weight over into the right foot. Now, I like that right hand at the right hip. Bend the left knee, grab it onto you can the pant leg, the sock, or hand grabs onto the top of the foot where the shoelaces would go. All right. Now, the knees are going to want to go away from each other. 
draw them in, inner thighs in. And then look down at your thighs. Can you draw the left thigh back so your thighs are in the same plane? One thigh isn't farther forward than the other. And then to intensify the stretch, deepen the stretch, deepen the bend in the knee, draw the heel in towards the back of the thigh. Now lift the chest, relax the shoulders, continue to push through the right heel, soften through the right toes, draw that left heel in towards the back of the thigh, one more breath, and then make sure you don't slingshot the foot down, let it very slowly release. And again, come down onto the mat. Wonderful. All right. And then take whatever feels good. Anytime we're balancing, the glute med is working. Maybe you felt a lot through the ankle. Okay. All right. And then same thing, second side. So feet hip distance. Again, I like to start with sort of the hands at the hips. Weight out of the toes. Shift your weight into the left. Bend the right. Grab onto whatever you need to grab onto. Usually we grab the top of the foot where the shoelaces would go. All right, so draw the thighs together, inner thighs in towards each other. <laughs> and then think about drawing the right leg back a little bit, because if you look down at your thighs, your right thigh is probably jutting forward. So can you draw it back? Like your right kneecap is facing the floor instead of the wall in front of you. Okay, and then to deepen the stretch, deepen the bend in the knee by drawing the heel deeper into the back of the thigh. Now, then you're using your arm a little bit more. Relax the shoulders, soften the arms. Look at something that's not moving. Push through the left heel. Lift the chest. One more breath. Make sure the foot doesn't slingshot down. Let it slowly release. <sighs> and then move around whatever you need to move around. And it, it, it'll be different than tree pose because your weight is distributed differently, right? In tree pose, you, you've gotta, you're going out, and so your weight is sort of being pulled in that direction. So different muscles work even just when we do those slight adjustments. Okay. All right, come on back to the top of the mat, facing forward, push the heels into the ground, lengthen up through the crown of the head, roll the shoulders down and back, take a deep breath. All right, inhale, circle the arms up, reach fingertips up towards the sky, exhale, hinge at the hips, fold forward, Uttanasana, inhale, lift up halfway, exhale, bend the knees, bring the hands onto the blocks and step the right foot back. Okay, now you have the option to drop the right knee down onto the ground. We're gonna take the same movement we did earlier, but we can intensify all of those stretches by lifting the back knee off the ground. So you are welcome to drop it if you need to, but keeping the back leg long, reaching the right heel back, left heel down, Think about tucking the tailbone like you're pointing your belly button towards your face, lifting the chest, and feel a stretch in the hip flexors. You might let the hips sort of drop down, but think, think more about tucking the tailbone too, as well as letting the hips lower. All right, and then take a deep breath in. Exhale, allow the hips to come back. Maybe the blocks walk with you, lengthening the left leg. Think about reaching the right hip forward towards the front of your mat, your left hip back. We're going to move with the breath. So inhale, bend the left knee, tuck the tailbone belly button towards the face, feel it in the right hip flexor. Exhale, shift the hips back, lengthen the left leg, reach the right hip forward. Inhale, shift forward to the lunge, tuck the tailbone, belly button to the face. Exhale, let the hips come back and maybe even reach the right, I'm sorry, left toes up towards the sky. Inhale, shift forward. Exhale, shift back. Inhale. 
Exhale. We're going to do a couple more. Now you're pushing the hands down, lifting up and out of the armpits. But soften throat, neck, and jaw. Relax the muscles of the face. One more of each. And then let's pause in this lunge, front knee bent. Okay, now from here, bring the hands down onto the ground. We're going to take down dog. So inhale, exhale, step back, downward facing dog. You're welcome to take a child's pose. Maybe just a tabletop. Maybe stay in down dog. Take about three breaths wherever you'd like to be. And then meet me back in downward facing dog. From down dog, deeply bend the knees. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, travel forward. Taking baby steps, walk the feet forward, forward, fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, bend the knees, bring the hands onto the blocks. Step the left foot back. Okay, so same thing, second side. So same deal. You can drop the back knee, but if the stretches are more intense, deeper if the back knee is lifted. So push right heel into the floor, left heel back towards the back of the mat. And that is going to want, it's going to, it's going to pull your pelvis to want to pull the belly button towards the back thigh, which is not going to lengthen the hip flexor. Draw the belly button up towards the face, scoop the low belly, tuck the tailbone, almost like you're trying to do cat pose in the pelvis. It's not about the shoulders. It's not about a hunch in the back. Can you round in the lower back, belly button towards the face, open the hip flexor. And if you need more when you're here, you might let the hips lower a little bit to the floor, but maintain the tuck of the tailbone first. Okay. So inhale, exhale, push the right heel down, maybe walk the hands back, lengthen the right leg, and think about squaring the hips, right hip back, left hip forward. Move with the breath. Inhale, shift forward, tuck the tailbone, belly button to the face. Exhale, shift back, reaching the right hip back, left hip forward. Inhale, shift forward into a lunge. Exhale, shift back, maybe reaching the right toes up towards the sky, letting the right foot come off the ground. Inhale, shift forward, low lunge. Exhale, shift back. A couple more like this with your breath. Continue to push hands down. Try to lengthen your spine. You're, you might be trying to arch your back at the lower back, but think sort of from waist up. Can you maintain length? Shoulders down and back. One more of each here. And then pause in this first position, this low lunge here. We're going to bring the hands down onto the mat. Step back down, dog. Last time, stepping back. And again, take what feels good. Maybe that's pausing and just noticing how your two sides feel different. Maybe you need a little bit of movement. Do what is calling to you about three more breaths. Okay, and then meet me in tabletop. Okay, so meet me in tabletop. And we're going to set up in pigeon, a fan favorite, pigeon. So you might know what you need or if you need anything. So some people like a blanket or more cushion under the back knee. Some people need a little cushion under one side of your seat. So that's what's good with the blocks. You're going to take what feels good, but or what feels good, but we're going to set up together. So start in tabletop and draw your left knee. 
to the outside of your left wrist. Like it's reaching towards the outside of the mat, towards the pinky toe. I always say pinky toe. I'm so used to saying pinky toe instead of pinky finger. Instead of reaching towards your pinky finger and then crawl this foot or use your hand to pull it up as much as you can. If you can think about figure four, which you're welcome to do instead, lay on your back and take figure four instead, we're looking for a figure four shape in this front leg. So if you can picture laying on your back and taking figure four, the shin is sort of parallel to the floor. That's what we're aiming for. It might not happen. That's okay. All right. Now you might stay up and lifted and sort of, again, hips sort of lifted away. But like that lunge, if you can maintain at least some length in the lower back, you might lower the hips and crawl the right leg back. And if you're wondering, well, how do I know if I'm maintaining length in my lower back? If your lower back is feeling like crunchy, that's not length. <laughs> you shouldn't be thinking, well, it feels good in my hips, but not good in my back, but it balances out. No, it doesn't balance out. <laughs> so don't, don't open one spot at the expense of uh, crunching another. So. All right. So you might have to think about kind of lifting, tucking the tailbone to create more length and staying up a little bit higher. That's okay. You might lower a little bit. You might drop your forearms down. You might rest your forehead down. But take a version of a pigeon that feels good. We'll stay for several breaths. So give yourself some time to adjust, to wiggle, to fidget, to move to explore, and then check in with the hips again. Drop the right hip, that right ASIS bone the, that we had our hand on earlier. Drop it down, your right ASIS bone, down towards the ground. Soften your shoulders. Soften your hands. Relax the muscles of your face. Turn your attention to your breath. Take three more breaths here. All right. Now, if you're on your elbows. Bring your hands back down onto the ground. Push your hands down, lift your chest. Hook the back toes under to crawl that leg forward, allowing the hips to lift. And take whatever feels good. Maybe just child's pose, maybe tabletop, maybe down dog. Couple of breaths, wherever you want to be. All right, then meet me in tabletop. All right, and you know the deal. So from tabletop, we're going to draw the right knee to the outside of the right wrist towards the right pinky finger and then crawl the foot up, pull it up, whatever you've got to do. But try to get that shin parallel to the top of the mat. And the longer we're here, the knee is going to probably bend a little bit. That's okay. But if we just can start with it in a better position, then it might feel better. And do whatever you need to do. We want to keep the hips fairly level. So we want to make sure we're not rolling and dropping back onto the right hip too much. Now you might keep the chest lifted. And again, you might have to think about tucking the tailbone, lengthening the lower back. You can still open the hip. You just have to be a little bit maybe more thoughtful about it. That's all right. 
Or maybe you can really lower the chest. And again, give yourself time. We're here for a bit. So settle in. And then again, reassess the hips. Make sure you're not rolling too much to the right. Drop the left hip. The left ASI is going the front of the hip down towards the mat. And again, remember, we're opening the hips, but not at the expense of anywhere else. Certainly not the lower back, but also not creating any unnecessary tension in the jaw. The muscles of the face, so soften wherever you can. Check in with your breath. Stay for three more breaths. If you're on your elbows, if you're on your forearms, Come on back up to your hands. Slowly lift your chest. Tuck the back toes under. Crawl that foot forward. Crawl that leg forward. Raise the hips. Take whatever feels good. Three more breaths. Okay. And then slowly make your way down onto your back. Come on down onto your back, and I always like to have something under the head, and I would have the blocks close by. All right. So coming down onto your back, knees bent, feet flat, arms out in opposite directions. Let the knees just sway side to side. Let's focus on the spine. Let's give the hips a break. Checking with your back, checking with your spine. Notice where your mind goes. Keep bringing it back to this moment, to the here and now. So keep noticing what you're feeling. Your breath is always something you can come back to. But what are you physically feeling in each moment? As your body comes in contact and away from the mat, what does that feel like? As your spine twists and turns, what does that feel like? All right, 
right now. However, you're moving whatever pace you're moving at, slow it down by at least 25%, maybe 50%. Slow it down. And as you slow the movement down through the legs, almost like you're moving your legs through molasses, by the back of the head, the upper back, backs of the arms, all melt into the ground. And knowing you always have free will to move, you always have autonomy to move, but this is a heavy sensation that you are allowing. So you're allowing the upper body to relax. You're allowing the legs to take their time. Move with your breath. Notice where your mind goes. And if it went somewhere, bring it back. And we're going to take a twist and we're going to hold it. So the next time your legs drop over to the left, let them stay there. Maybe you scoot the hips to the right, but let the legs fall over to the left. Take any leg variation you like. Keep those shoulders on the ground, back of the head melted onto the ground. Couple breaths here. Let everything release. Let everything go. Three more breaths. Now again, think about using your right obliques to do the work. Inhale, exhale, right obliques, pull the legs back to the center. Realign the spine, take a deep breath. All right, now you might just come right into the second side. You might like to let the legs rock and sway a couple times. But obviously, we have to take the second side. So keeping the shoulders grounded, backs of the arms, backs of the hands heavy on the floor. Eventually, let the legs drop over to the right. Maybe scoot the hips to the left. And again, take a leg variation that feels good. And then just relax. Soften the muscles, soften the joints. Check in with your breath, allow it to be fluid and smooth. And keep your awareness present. Three more breaths. 
using the left oblique to do the work. Inhale, exhale, return the legs back to the center. Return the spine to neutral. <sighs> Till it feels good. Take a couple moments, take a couple breaths. Okay. And then grab onto your block. We are going to end the same way we began. I guess minus Shavasana. We still have Shavasana, but let's come into the supported butterfly pose, Supta Baddha Konasana. So again, bottoms of the feet together, legs make the shape of a diamond. And now maybe you can take the blocks a little bit lower or farther out, even um, keeping them on a higher height, but letting them come closer to the knee as opposed to the hip or the ankle. We'll allow the knees to drop a little bit closer to the floor, opening the hips. And maybe you can get your feet a little bit closer to your hips, bending the knees a little bit more. Now, do whatever you're doing without judgment. So maybe it's not deeper than earlier. That's okay. But just come into something that feels good. That's what we're, we're trying to just honor the body, right? And so do what it's asking for, whether that's deep or mild. And we're just going to take a few deep breaths here. So maybe hands on the belly. Whatever you need. Notice what you're feeling. Three more breaths. All right, and then slowly bring the hands to the outsides of the thighs. Use the strength of the arms to push the knees together like you're closing a book. Bring the feet flat onto the ground, let the knees knock in. Inhale. Exhale, hug the knees into the chest. One more time, do what feels good. Maybe happy baby, maybe you're just staying still. And then in your own time, set up for Shavasana. To do what you need to to set up in your shavasana, remembering that it's just about relaxing, just about releasing. Sometimes it's tempting to get into a physical stretch for shavasana, but it's really not about that. Find a very neutral, passive, easy, effortless pose where you can just feel comfy, cozy, and relaxed. And then let everything go. Release what doesn't serve you. 
let those things go. And allow yourself some rest. Allow your body, your mind, all layers of you, let everything rest.
slowly deepen your breath. Invite deep, big, full breath into your body. And then add some movement, like wiggling fingers and toes, rocking the head side to side. Roll wrists and ankles, move arms and legs. Maybe take a full body stretch. Take a deep breath in. As you breathe out, hug your knees into your chest. Slowly roll over onto either side. Using the strength of both arms, push into the ground, come up to a seat. Take a moment to thank yourself for making it to your mat today. Maybe reflect on your intention. Now slowly try the hands together in front of the heart in Anjali Mudra. To seal our practice, we'll chant the sound of Om one time. Om is said to be the oldest and most sacred mantra. Inhale. Exhale, a clearing breath. Inhale for Om. The teacher in me bows and respects the teacher in you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, thank you so much for joining me. Ah, I needed that. <laughs> Maybe that was obvious to you, but sometimes I really need the practice that um, I do with students. And so that was today. So I appreciate you. I really do. So thank you so much for joining me, for participating, for being here. Thank you so much. Bye.